let us see about one of the more common and the most important topic that is dengue in pediatrics. As you all know dengue fever is an acute febrile illness which is characterized by four major symptoms. Those are fever, myalgia that is muscle pain, arthralgia joint pain along with rash. So, there are certain points which differentiate a dengue fever from severe dengue infection. So, those are in severe dengue infection there will be abnormalities in hemostasis as well as leakage of plasma from the capillaries. So, if these two features are present then it comes under the severe dengue infection that is called as dengue shock syndrome. Now, coming to the epidemiology of dengue, dengue was transmitted by Aedes aegypti which acts as the vector and this is more commonly seen in urban population and it breeds in stored water. So, the causative virus for dengue is arbovirus which is an RNA virus belonging to the family Flaviviridae and there are four serotypes of dengue virus which include den V1, den V2, den V3 and den V4. Now, coming to the transmission, dengue is transmitted through the bite of female Aedes mosquito and when the mosquito bites, it injects the virus into the humans and humans act as the amplifiers and then there is an incubation period for the multiplication of the virus which is around 3 to 7 days. Now, coming to the pathophysiology, when a person first gets affected with one of the serotypes that is the first time when he is getting affected for example, with then V1 serotype that is called as dengue fever. And because of that infection there will be antibodies formed against that particular serotype that is then V1 and after he recovers from the first infection when he gets the infection for the second time with another serotype other than den 1 as, as per this example. So, this is called as secondary infection. So, what happens is the den V1 antibodies which are formed during the first infection, they instead of getting neutralized the virus, they exaggerate the infection. They go bind to the second serotype and they mask the effect. So, instead of neutralizing the virus, they exaggerate the infection. This is also called as antigenic sin. So, because of which there will be activation of more antigen presenting cells, there will be increased T cell response, more cytokines are released which produces a condition called as dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome. So, these will always occur as a complication when the person is affected with dengue for the second time with another serotype, dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock syndrome. So, dengue can be of two types either it is simple dengue fever or severe dengue infection. The dengue fever as we have seen already occurs because of primary infection and there will be symptoms like fever, rash, myalgia and arthralgia and there are no vascular signs and symptoms like abnormalities in hemostasis or any capillary leakage. Whereas, in severe dengue infection there will be vascular signs and symptoms present. This occurs only during the secondary infection where there is endothelial cell dysfunction, increased capillary permeability leading to microvascular leak, plasma leak and because of which there will be three events occurring disseminated intravascular coagulation, thrombocytopenia because of increased bleeding and there will be increased hematocrit because there will be plasma leakage. So, which increases the RBC mass thereby increasing the hematocrit and because of DIC there will be activation of clotting factors and fibrinolytic pathways. Thrombocytopenia because there will be platelet destruction because of molecular mimicry between the NS1 antigen of dengue and endogenous self protein because of which there is platelet destruction leading to thrombocytopenia. 
and in liver there will be diffuse hepatitis with focal necrosis and steatosis. There will also be CNS involvement due to direct neutroph neurotrophic effect as affinity to CNS. So, there will be also CNS involvement. Coming to the clinical manifestations, the incubation period as we have seen already is 3 to 7 days and there are 3 phases in the clinical manifestations which are febrile phase, critical phase and the recovery phase. These are the 3 stages of infection. Let us see one by one in detail. First is febrile phase. As the name suggests, febrile is fever. So, there is sudden onset of high grade fever which lasts for about 2 to 7 days and along with fever there will also be other symptoms like facial flushing, skin erythema, body ache, myalgia, arthralgia, headache, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, sore throat, conjunctival congestion and pharyngeal congestion. These are all the features seen in the febrile phase. Also there will be positive tourniquet test along with minor hemorrhagic manifestations like petechiae, mucosal bleeding from nose and gums. We will see what tourniquet test is a little after and also liver may be enlarged and there is decrease in WBCs and platelet count. So, there is leukopenia and thrombocytopenia. This is the febrile phase. Next will be a critical phase which is around 3 to 7 days from the onset of fever. Here as the name suggests it is a very critical stage which should be identified and treatment should be started early. Here there will be bleeding, shock, thrombocytopenia and there will be decreased hematocrit. And in critical phase some of the features seen include organ dysfunction, severe hepatitis and CNS is also involved causing encephalitis, heart involvement leading to myocarditis. Recovery phase is around 1 to 2 days in critical phase after critical phase where there is gradual resorption of extravascular fluids and uh, as the name suggests there is a recovery of the patient and there is decrease symptoms, hemodynamic status stabilizes and the thrombocytopenia and leukopenia also develops. And now coming to the dengue, severe dengue fever. There is a certain criteria to name it as severe dengue fever. The clinical criteria includes there should be acute onset high grade fever along with hemorrhagic manifestations, tender hepatomegaly, effusion in body cavities and or or shock. And this hemorrhagic manifestations is identified by a test called as tourniquet test. Tourniquet test is first we tie a BP cuff mid and we start inflating it to a pressure which is midway between the systolic and diastolic pressure and leave it as such for 5 minutes. Now we will slowly deflate the cuff and wait for 2 minutes and after 2 minutes we count the number of petechial spots in the anticubital fossa. And if the spots are more than or equal to 10 per 1 square inch, this is called as positive tourniquet test. So, 10 or more petechial spots per 1 square inch indicates positive tourniquet test. And the laboratory criteria for severe dengue includes thrombocytopenia that is less than 1 lakh platelets per millimeter cube and there is increase in hematocrit that is PCV, back cell volume. Coming to the investigations, in investigations there will be decreased leukocyte count, decreased platelet thrombocytopenia and uh, there is serum protein and albumin also decreased in shock, transaminases are elevated which includes or which suggests there is liver dysfunction, the transaminases are alanine transaminase and aspartate transaminase. And there is increase in SGOT that is aspartate transaminase more than the SGPT alanine transaminase. This suggests dengue rather than other viral infections. There is more increase in SGOT than SGPT. 
Also, there is hyponatremia and because of that acidosis, increased urea and creatinine, which indicates there is some kidney dysfunction. An X-ray chest shows pleural effusion, USG abdomen can show ascites and organomegaly. And confirmation of dengue is done by certain tests like virus isolation by culture, PCR polymerase chain reaction, dengue NS1 antigen detection and IgM and IgG. IgM appear early in the infection whereas IgG appear late almost about 2 to 3 months after the IgM disappears. Now, coming to the management, management differs for different stages. First, a mild dengue that is undifferentiated fever with no specific symptoms. We give paracetamol for fever and we keep monitoring the patient for any signs. Next is dengue fever without warning signs that is when the patient has fever, body ache, rashes, petechiae, but there are no warning signs. Let us see what the warning signs are a little later. So, for this we give paracetamol and we advise plenty of fluid intake orally and we monitor for any warning signs. An important point to be noted is we should avoid using salicylates and other NSAIDs because they predispose to the mucosal bleed. Now, dengue with warning signs. How to manage a case of dengue with warning signs? So, dengue fever with risk factors if present, we hospitalize the patient and we start with normal saline or ringolactate which is the fluid of choice either normal saline or ringolactate at the rate of 7 ml per kg per hour. And we assess the patient after 1 hour. If there is improvement, then we decrease it to first it was 7 ml and now we decrease it to 5 ml per kg per hour. And we further assess after 1 hour and if there is still improvement, we decrease it to 3 ml per kg per hour and then we continue IV fluids until stable for 24 hours and then discharge the patient when stable for 1 to 2 days. This is when there is improvement in the condition of the patient. First we start with 7 ml per kg per hour then we reduce it to 5 ml per kg per hour, then further 3 ml per kg per hour, then continue IV fluids until stable for 24 hours and discharge after 24 to 48 hours if the patient is stable. What if there is no improvement of the condition of the patient? Initially we start with 7 ml per kg per hour and after 1 hour assessment if it is not improving then we give NS or all at the rate of 10 ml per kg per hour. After 1 hour we, we later assess and if there is no improvement we again give NS or RL at the rate of 15 ml per kg per hour and then assess. If there is still no improvement then we start giving colloids. Colloids at the rate of 10 ml per kg per hour. If there is still no improvement we look for other findings like anemia, acidosis or myocardial dysfunction and we start treating it. Only if we start treating it, the patient improves. So, this is about the management of dengue with risk factors. Now, coming to the management of severe dengue. In severe dengue fever, first we assess if the patient is in shock and how severe is the shock. If there is hypotension, this is classified under dengue shock syndrome 3 or if there is unrecordable blood pressure, the blood pressure cannot be elicited, then it comes under dengue shock syndrome 4. So, in dengue shock syndrome 3, we here also the fluid of choice is either normal saline or ringolactate and here we start at the rate of 10 to 20 ml per kg per hour and then we assess the condition of the patient after 1 hour. 
So, and also if if the blood pressure is unrecordable, that is dengue shock syndrome 4, even here we give NS or RL at the rate of 20 ml per kg, but here we give it as bolus because it is very critical condition. So, we give it as a bolus and up to 3 boluses can be given. Later the patient is assessed. In both the conditions, if the patient improves, we gradually decrease the ringer lactate with monitoring as in case of the dengue with warning signs we have seen a little earlier. But if there is no improvement, then we assess the hematocrit. So, if there is still no improvement after giving bolus or after giving ringer lactate or NS at the level at the rate of 10 to 20 ml per kg per hour, we measure the hematocrit. If the hematocrit decreases with no improvement, we go for blood transfusion. Whereas, if the hematocrit increases in spite of there is no improv improvement, then we give colloids. Colloids are given at the rate of 10 ml per kg. And after that we assess, we assess the condition of the patient. If the patient improves, it is well and good. If there is no improvement, then same as the previous case, we look for any other signs like anemia, acidosis, myocardial ischemia or any myocardial injury and we treat accordingly. So, this is the management strategy for severe dengue fever. Lastly, coming to the prevention, as we all know prevention is always better than cure. So, the initial step should be to prevent getting dengue. So, for that a simple measures which everyone can take include prevent water stagnation, thereby we avoid the breeding places for mosquitoes. So, there is no transmission. Also, any stored water as in tanks, ponds, they should be always covered. Open storage places also serve as bleeding places for mosquitoes. So, all these are for avoiding the breeding places of mosquitoes. And in some countries, the live attenuated vaccine, which is quadruple vaccine, is also available for dengue, which is given between the age of 9 to 45 years. This is also followed in some countries. So, these are the few measures for prevention of dengue. So, that is all about dengue in pediatrics. Thank you.